As Marco said, my name is Massimo Banzi. I'm the co-founder of the Arduino project, which is an open source hardware project I'm going to tell you very briefly about. First of all, I have to say that Arduino loves Android because you know, I'm also I'm an Android user. I have several phones and tablets running on, on Android. So I'm here in representation of the team. This is the Arduino team. So we have um, me and Gianluca, the guy with the glasses, that were two Italians, then David Mellis, who's at the MIT Media Lab, Tom Igo, who is at NYU, and David Quartieres, who teaches in Sweden. So the five of us sort of uh, make this Arduino project, which the, the official definition is an open source electronic prototyping platform based on flexible, easy to use hardware and software. That doesn't tell you very much, but the idea is that we make these boards <clears throat> that contain a very simple microcontroller, and then we developed an, um, an, a development environment that lets you program these, um, these devices. And the idea is that we sort of uh, em emphasize the ease of use. I mean, it's, it's not super easy to program microcontrollers. So we try to sort of make it as simple as possible to create as many defaults as possible in a way so you don't have to customize. If you look at the, this is the sort of more, the, the, the most frequently used board. There's about 300,000 of these around the world. And um, the idea that there are no jumpers, there are no, nothing to configure. And, and also the, I will show you later, the development environment is very simple. It only has six buttons. So if you look at, in comparison with tools like Eclipse, we have like dozens of buttons, and then when you click them, they sort of have other buttons come out. So it be, becomes sort of, and then you have views and everything. Imagine somebody that's never done any programming and never touched any electronic circuit in his life trying to learn how to program with a tool like that. It's very complicated. So the idea was to make everything super simple and essentially try to make, uh, make it possible for uh, in beginners to get started with microcontrollers. Then what happened is that we realized there's actually a lot of people who are not beginners who are using it. There's a lot of engineers that like secretly, without telling anybody, they use Arduino. Then they tell they, everybody they do assembly programming on 32-bit microprocessor, but then effectively they're using you know, Arduino because it's just simple. You just plug it in and in uh, 20 minutes you're, you're up and running. This is because all the people that you saw in the picture, uh, essentially we teach, uh, we teach designers. So people who don't have a background in software, in hardware. So our essentially target market at the beginning was um, these people who don't know anything about technology and yet they need to, they want to prototype whatever they pr design using technology. Another feature of Arduino is that it's probably the most sort of with, uh, widespread um, open source hardware project. So this diagram, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail, tries to outline the way the system works, but essentially the Arduino team designs hardware, releases open source software, releases documentation that it's really uh, sort of published as an, with a Creative Commons license, and then companies make the hardware, and the people who license the Arduino brand, they basically pay back a royalty to Arduino in order to sort of continue the work. And then there's also people who make products based on Arduino, and there's also like in the corner over there, there's some, the, 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 you know, the, the perfect clones that you can buy from, perfect I wouldn't say, the clones that you can get from, from eBay. So there's people mostly in China that sort of clone the whole thing regardless of the trademarks or anything else. So it's an interesting ecosystem of people taking Arduinos, building things, everything else. So it has been used for all sorts of projects like, you know, the, this project that make your plants at home able to call you on the phone or to send you Twitter messages. So this one sort of monitors plants or somebody use it to build this, uh, the, um, uh, this is the magic clock from, um, from Harry Potter. So you can see that this is analyzing Twitter feeds and it's sort of moving the hands to indicate where the members of a family are. So this, you know, there's, the projects go from the sort of very silly to the, in a way, to the, to the very useful. So, but also you have companies like MakerBot has an Arduino inside each one of their 3D printers. So this is an open source 3D printer so the hardware, the software, 
and the design of the printer is open. Or you have other companies like, uh, or communities like DIY drones who make platforms that you can use to fly drones or helicopter that are based on Arduino. And again, they're open source, both hardware and software. Or other people who um, like this project over here, which I think it's really fascinated, is, is fascinating. It's called Open PCR. So it's part of a set of tools that you can use to analyze DNA. So this particular machine, it's an open source hardware and software machine where you can put DNA samples and they sort of amplify them in a way so that you can further analyze them. But what's interesting about this is that this is $500. You can buy a kit for $500 and make it yourself. Uh, or you can hack and, and sort of build upon it. And there's like now a lot of people who are taking this particular direction. I'll show you quickly a few of the things that we make. So this is the Arduino Uno, then this is a bigger one. The Arduino Bluetooth, this is the Arduino Lilypad, which is kind of useful in a way for people who want to experiment with fashion and electronics. So you can sew this into fabric. It's not, you don't solder it. You actually use needle and thread in order to ma uh, make circuits onto fabric with this. And so I'm gonna skip a few things. One thing is that it's, useful also is that Arduino has generated the market of a lot of these things that they are called in Arduino slang uh, shields. So these are circuits that you can plug on top of your Arduino to extend the functionality of the board just by snapping them on top. So the one you see here in the picture is the Wi-Fi shield. And I think the Wi-Fi shield is interesting because we try to sort of make a Wi-Fi interface for Arduino where even the source code of the whole sort of TCP IP and all the other parts that go on inside the Wi-Fi interface are also open source. So you can further hack into the thing. So lots of people have started to use the Arduino form factor because they can find hundreds of these uh, shields around. So one thing that was has been mentioned already, in May at some point, Google came up with this idea of that they, they developed this accessory development uh, sort of kit where uh, they took an Arduino design, and since the Arduino is open source, they extended the design and they released this, uh, this kit that you see here, where you have a basic Arduino Mega that has been modified, and then on top, there is this shield that contains a bunch of buttons and lights and everything else. So we made our own version of it, but you can see here. So during the Google sort of I.O., you saw people driving this massive, um, maze labyrinth, you know, using, using a, a tablet. Then some other people started to make projects, like this is something, somebody who made their own sort of ADK by putting together different parts they found on the internet. This is something somebody else I found on, on YouTube who did uh, a project based on, um, on Arduino and the ADK. So, so we, we thought it was incredibly cool, and we thought that also, on the other hand, the way everything was explained, in a way, was designed for people who have experience in developing for Android. And also, it required a certain level of experience. So we started to figure out ways where we can make this sort of combination of Android, phones and tablets, and Arduino more easy to use for everyday people. Another issue is that at the moment, if you sort of go around the internet and Google, you don't really see a lot of projects done with this um, technology, which is a bit of a pity. Normally, people jump on these kind of things on Arduino really quickly, and this has been sort of slower than I imagined. So we started to look at different things, and one thing that we uh, realized that we could actually take away the issue of having to learn about electronics when you're trying to prototype something with, with, with Android and the ADK. So we make this thing called the Tinker Kit. Essentially what you see here in the picture, each one of the square modules is either a sensor, so a button, a, I don't know, a potentiometer, a switch or something. And then, then you have the rectangular modules are outputs. So you have relays, MOSFETs, and essentially you just use cables to plug them onto the Arduino so that you can't make a mis uh, the wrong connection and, and, and you can sort of, you don't have to worry about how do you wire up an accelerometer. You just plug the accelerometer. So we came up with this, which is the Arduino ADK. 
plus Tinkercad. So you essentially every plug on the Arduino becomes a connector. And so you can build a circuit in a matter of minutes. And then we start to look at the software side. So we started to open up on this website that we have called labsarduino.cc some different scenarios on how people would make this connection and how they would make it um, simpler. So we have a discussion on how you use the ADK, but also we realize that lots of people have got regular old phones that don't support the ADK, so we also explain how to use the ADB protocol. And also there's another Bluetooth library that's coming out that you can use with Arduino to talk to the phone through, through Bluetooth. So this is the Arduino development environment, super simple. And we also took uh, sort of our cousin project called Processing. Processing normally is designed so that you can write Java application for, for, a, for a computer, but they recently added this mode they call the Android mode, and it's incredibly cool because you can very, very simply write uh, an Android application. So when I work with my students, I can actually teach them how to make an Android application in about five minutes. So the only thing I need to do is to tell uh, processing where's my phone, where's, co where's my phone connected to. I write a very simple piece of code. I press one button, and like about a minute later, the application is running on the phone. So we sort of, and mostly the work here has been done by my friend David Quartiers from, from the team, he sort of figured out a way to add the ability to, to make accessories. So in a way, you have very simple software running on the Arduino, then making the application has become really, really simple. And then you press a couple of buttons and you have an application running on the phone or the tablet. So we sort of made it very, very simple for people to get started. And also one thing that we are about to launch in the next couple of months is that we actually built a programming language for Arduino, which is based on this thing called OpenBlocks, which is the same library that's used by the Android App Inventor. So the idea here is that you can actually take a step further and you remove all the need to understand a lot about electronics, and then you make the programming incredibly simple. So you could, in a way, make an app with App Inventor on Android and make it also visually for Arduino. And in the end, you take away sort of um, all the difficulties and all the barriers, and you can actually get something done very quickly. So I'm gonna show you quickly two experiments I'm working on. So for example, now I'm trying to make something slightly more useful than blinking as an LED. So at the moment I'm working on a demo of connecting this blood pressure monitor with a cheap tablet. So this is a Nuke, it's only $200. And um, I think it's an interesting direction that we are trying to look at how you can use cheap Android tablets and the ADK, for example, in education to run scientific experiments. To, to, you know, you could reuse that platform for multiple uses. And another area which is very exciting is that you have open source hardware like the BeagleBoard here that can actually run Android. So in a way you can, you can basically go one step further and make devices like, you know, that contain the BeagleBoard running Android that actually speak directly to, to Arduino. So you can get one step further into the sort of making of, of devices that are less and less like a phone or a tablet, but use the power of, of Android uh, to create sort of a, a complex application. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm really glad to, to, to be here because we really like the sort of the community, especially the open source community that uh, sort of developed around Android. And we hope that we can make it easier for people to try to create more sort of complex application that marry the phone and the tablet with the physical, with the physical world. Thank you.